Um, so I'm going to turn it over to the, our, our final speaker, uh, and that's Shar Lee. Shar uh, previously used substances and has herself experienced overdosing. She has also experienced the traumas of watching many of her friends die from poisoned substances. Shar now uses her own experiences to help others by actively engaging in the local community as both a peer outreach worker and a companion to many at-risk citizens who use drugs. Charlie received the Kindred Spirit Award in 2022 for her local efforts. She's a member of many committees and groups, including Kitchener's Lived Experience Working Group, the People's Action Group, where she was previously the group's co-chair, the Unsheltered Campaign, and Awareness of Low-Income Voices. Shar continues to use her personal insights, education, and experiences to advocate locally in our Waterloo Region community. And I can say personally, I've had several opportunities to meet and chat with Shar in groups, and uh, I've always enjoyed uh, the opportunity to, to hear from Shar. Shar, thank you very much for making yourself available for tonight. I'm going to turn it over to you. You're welcome. Sarah, how am I supposed to call like how am I supposed to follow Sarah? Like seriously. <laughs> um UBU. <laughs> I I feel I feel what Sarah Sarah says. Um it's very hard. So a couple things. One of one of the things that I heard during this meeting really hit me. Hit me a lot harder than I thought it was going to, actually, because we do talk about this a lot. Um was the fact that we don't have enough time to grieve when when something happens. And I mean, we we do see it a lot. And and I never really I, I never really thought of it until a couple months ago when a close friend of mine passed away. Um I went from seeing this gentleman every day to going into the social development center and not seeing him anymore. And it was so hard. And I didn't, I didn't really, I don't really know how to grieve him because we're told to leave work at work, right? We're told that when we go home, it's, it's home life, like, right? And I'm not okay with that. I'm not okay with not sharing a little bit of my personal life with some people that, that we support or we try to help because the people that we help are telling us their secrets, their, their hardships, and we're not supposed to tell them anything about ourselves. So I took the peer outreach course because as a peer outreach worker, you can, you are allowed to say a little bit about yourself. So that's the difference between like an actual social worker and the peer outreach worker. So, um, I don't know. I just found it. I'm a very outgoing person. I do get really nervous and stuff like this, though. I'm really not sure why. Um, but I can pretty much walk up to anybody um, and have a conversation with them. Um, Regan's going to kill me because I'm going to use her for example. Regan and I were at, at Walmart about a month ago, and there's this lady, random lady, by the ham section. And she just starts talking to me. And me and Regan ended up talking to this lady for like an hour in the parking lot about stuff that was going on. So we both gave her phone numbers and told her to call us if she needed anything else. And we helped her and it was just a random stranger. It was, it, I don't know. I just, I have a personality that people are drawn to, I guess. People like to tell me stuff and I like to help them. So um, I got into working with people on the streets because I myself was homeless in 2010. Um, my mom passed away in 20, 2006, and I didn't know anything about the homeless community. I didn't know anything about it at all. And then I woke up one morning, and my whole life changed in an instant. My mom wasn't sick or anything. She had fallen and hit her head, so it was just an accident. Um, and it changed my life. It changed my life in so many ways. But one of the things that I'm not, I'm not thankful that my mom passed away. Obviously, I wish my mom was here, so don't take this the wrong way. But it made me realize that not everybody gets 
you know, food on the table at night and not everybody has a room to go to or a house to go to or apartment. And I just learned so much the first couple of years of being homeless. This and I, and I had a worker that she was amazing and she actually listened. And for the first time in my whole entire life, I felt like there was an adult that cared because my mom, my mom tried her best, but she wasn't always there. Right. Like my mom was kind of an absent parent. And so I remember telling myself that I was going to be that person. I was going to be that person that listened to people when they needed help. And I did that. And I've been doing that. I've been doing that for, well, since 2005. So however long that is. And I don't know. I just, I, I love it. I'm passionate about it. I, there's stuff I need to work on. I know Sarah will yell at me if I don't work on stuff. Um, but I just give it my best. And I know I'm not perfect at it. And I know I'm going to make mistakes, but I try. Yeah, I'm going to Shar. <laughs> <laughs> so Shar, um, I mentioned one of the organizations you're with is the People's Action Group. And I don't think too many people are familiar with that, or maybe more so than I was, but I wasn't. And I was really impressed with that group. Why don't you tell us about that group, who they are, and, and what it is you all do in the community? Okay. So People's Action Group was a program that started through Step Home. Um, Step, Home, Step Home was a program that was ran through Mary's Place as well as a whole bunch of other little places. Um, and then Lutheran won the bid, I guess you'd call it. And now they they do some pieces of it, but not all of it. But back when I was on it in 2010, 2011, um, the, the worker followed you through your whole journey. Like went to court with you, went to like family and children's service meetings if you had to, went like helped you do apartment searching. They went to the doctor if you needed to go to the doctor, like everything. They were by your side for everything. So um they he said they didn't have enough funding at the end of the pilot project. And I don't believe that was true, but they that's what they told us. And right. Now, 10 years later, after the program had stopped, every member of the PEG that was part of that, that's how PEG started, it's still a part of the community. It's still an advocate for homelessness. We're still, every one of us are still working on a program or a group or more than one group related to homelessness. So. Yeah, everyone, everyone as who's part of the PEG were recipients or benefited from the peg right i mean or the sort that that type of service that one-on-one -on -one with a social worker that yes. walked with you yes. why was that so important um you feel heard and when you're going through like tra you're going through trauma like you you just lost like your home or your family and all that stuff and you're scared and, and you're alone and then all of a sudden this one person it doesn't matter how mad you mess up, they're still there. They don't leave, right? Like you can call them and they never make you feel bad for calling them. And now, like I know that there's a lot of outreach workers now that wish they could do that, but there's not enough time. Like I work, we don't have enough time to do that. Um, so <laughs> I wish that we could bring that program back as it worked. And trust me, I've been trying. I bring it up at every group meeting. I bring it up every talk I do. I bring step home up. Um, it worked. It was really, really good. And I mean, before I die, I'll have that program running again. <laughs> so that's my goal. But, so, yeah. so, so the peg. So, and then tell us about. Um, what you do uh, through the lived experience working group. I know, uh, I think I saw David Alton is uh, out here as well. And I know that uh, it's part of that. So tell me about the, uh, which I think is a great program uh, started up by the city of Kitchener, uh, the lived and experience and the social development center. Yes. Yeah. Another excellent group. I had a chance to meet with just recently to do a virtual call with. So tell us about the, the work you do with them. Um, right now we're doing a project with Wilfred Laurier with Manuel and his students. And we're doing, well, I don't know if I'm supposed to say, David, 
Am I allowed to talk about this? If not, <laughs> sorry. Um, we're doing a photo conversation. So I think, Rob, you got an invitation um, about, so a bunch of us went out and took pictures and then we're going to get the counselors and a bunch of people to come in and tell us how they feel when they look at those pictures. And we're kind of doing like a report on that to see how they see it, it how it's different than how we look at it. Um, Cause we, we've tried everything else and nobody knows what we're doing. So um, David's really good to work with. He, he's different. He thinks outside the box like I do. So we have a lot of creative stuff coming up. I don't want to ruin anything. I don't know. Well, how much yeah, I'm to say. no, no, that's okay. Sure. So I could tell you uh, you guys put on an event in the winter time where we had an opportunity counselors, a number of counselors came and, and I know Peter Sweeney was there as well. Uh, uh, the, the commissioner. Uh, and I think it was a great uh, opportunity to hear from people who uh, are living the experience and sharing that with us to make us better educated. What's your message for everyone out there about uh, the people that you're interacting with? Walk beside them, not in front of them. What's that? Yeah. Walk beside them, not in front of them. Right, yeah. right. Why yeah. is that important? Um, because everybody needs somebody to lean on. Sometimes, sometimes you just meet a random stranger and you could save their life with just a quick hello. Um, it doesn't hurt to say hello to people. Sometimes they'll answer you. Sometimes they won't, but you tried, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Sure. Sure. Was there anything else you wanted to share with, with, uh, the people here tonight? No, but I'm nervous. So sorry. <laughs> well, look, if you think of something, listen, thank you for coming out. And if you think of something uh, that you want to to add at any point, uh, you just uh, jump in there. But thank you very much for sharing not only your experience, but also sharing your knowledge and your skill and your talents in the community by helping others. And, and as you said, walking beside people, not in front. And that's uh, such an important message. And I thank you for that.